Hey guys, welcome to this week's video. So short-tailed pythons and blood pythons in general are growing massively in popularity. Uh, it's been going on for a while. A lot of the snake hobby seems to go in cycles, but these guys have stayed pretty steadily popular. Uh, I think they're gonna get more popular. And so in this video, I'm gonna dive into five of the reasons why I feel like blood and short-tailed pythons are here to stay. <laughs> as always who are returning to tuning into this week's video and thank you uh, if this is your first time checking it out so short tail pythons blood pythons you can see this lovely shirt here shout out to Kara over at the blood cell uh, one of two shirts I picked up from her uh, you can jump onto her store same site as mine on Redbubble there and check that out uh, if you'd like to get some merchandise from there um, so what I think first drew me into to blood and short tail pythons was definitely the look uh here you had a snake that had a little bit more of a solid structure um but they weren't enormous you know you're looking at something that's usually four five six maybe seven feet uh in length but they have that that girth and that stability and uh the head shape the structure just everything about it really kind of drew me in uh, which kind of goes hand in hand with this this number one thing of why I think that they're here to stay and why they're such cool animals to keep is that the structure gives you a big snake feel when you handle a, an adult blood python you feel like you're handling a larger animal the weight is there you know a lot of them will be 15 20 30 pounds um, they sit like a bigger snake does but they're in this smaller package where housing is much more efficient. Uh, you know, for cage size, a four by two, something in that realm is often good enough for most adults. Some adults will require a larger space, but you're typically not looking at these eight, 10, 12 foot enclosures. That doesn't mean that you can't offer that to these guys. They are a bit shy and secretive. They get more confidence with age. So if you were gonna do a larger enclosure, obviously you wanna make sure that you design it right so that they do feel comfortable in there. Um, but four by two really, really does well for most adult short tails and most blood pythons. Um, you know, they are pretty sedentary animals. They don't move around a whole lot. They are the definition of an ambush predator. So from that perspective, I guess for some people, it might be considered a drawback if they're not as active and moving around in their enclosure. But I don't mind that. They move around plenty when they come out and interact with me, and that's good enough for me. I don't need them to be a display animal. I don't need to see them moving around. Um, so obviously, as I've always pitched, you want to make sure that you pick an animal that's suitable to what you're looking for instead of trying to force what you're looking for onto an animal that may not be suitable for that. Uh, so those, those structure, the, the big snake feel in a smaller package, the smaller cage requirements, obviously larger than something like maybe a ball python, although ball pythons honestly can be a little bit more active than a blood or short tail, so they'll probably use a similar amount of space. Um, but these guys just really are gonna park it they're gonna move when they need water, they're gonna move when they see food or thermoregulate, uh, but that's about it, and that's what they do naturally. Um, so, so definitely that is probably the first thing that drew me to them was that, that kind of look. Uh, from there, once I got my hands on them and started working with them, definitely hands down, one of my favorite things about these guys is their personality. Uh, and anybody that's watched the channel, hopefully has had a chance to see me interact a lot with these animals, and you can see the wheels turning all the time. You can see the curiosity. You can watch them go from nervous and apprehensive to more confident over time or even within a handling session uh, just as they realize your intentions or, or where you're coming from. Uh, so the personality is huge to me. Uh, it's a snake that you can put in the time and build a relationship with and see that reward. Uh, you know, some snakes, either the intelligence level isn't there to really build that kind of relationship or they're just naturally more flighty and more nervous. Uh, and so it can be more difficult to not only gain that relationship, but then maintain it. With these guys, once you have it, you pretty much have it, unless you do something to screw that up. 
Um, you know, I could leave these guys in their cage for three weeks, go in and pick them up, and it's just like I was in there the day before. Uh, whereas if I did that with like the white lip pythons, it's a totally different ball game. If I'm not constantly around them and constantly reminding them that we have this relationship, they get apprehensive and we take a step back and we have to kind of, you know, keep chugging like that in order to, to keep that relationship where we want it. Uh, so I definitely like that. I love the intelligence. I love how visual they are. And one of the coolest things that uh, I've mentioned before is how you know they sit in a position, they like to be in that ambush position as we just mentioned. And what they like is they like for you not to be able to see them, but they like to be able to see around themselves. So you often see them just having their head sticking out of a hide or burrowed down with just their head at the edge of the burrow or underneath some leaf litter with just their head sticking out. So they feel secure, but they can also see around them and what's going on both to detect predators and to, uh, to find prey. Um, and they also just tend to be a, a fairly curious species about their surroundings. So you'll watch their eyes and instead of moving their head to look at something, they'll just change their eye position very subtly. Uh, and they have very expressive eyes and you can tell a lot about what's going on in their head from what's going on with their eyes. Now, part of the reason that they do that obviously is being an ambush predator, if they were to be moving their head back and forth, there's a good chance that that prey is going to detect that movement or on the flip side, a predator is going to detect that movement and find their location. By just moving their eyes, it's a much, much greater chance of success for them that they're not going to be spotted by either of those. Um, and that behavior carries over even within a handling session, you'll watch them. Now, sometimes they'll move their head um, to get into a better strike position or defensive position if they feel like that's what they need to do. Um, but that intelligence uh, how personable they can be. Uh, I have some really great relationships with some of my Bloods and short tail Pythons. There's a lot of trust between us. I can get away with things that I wouldn't be able to get away with a strange Blood or short tail or even some other ones within my collection. Um, so that's one thing that I pride myself in is being able to handle my animals in a manner to where they know that mutual respect is intact and that I'm not going to hurt them and that I'm not going to put them in a situation that's dangerous for them. Uh, and so earning that, that trust and building that relationship is probably my favorite part of snake keeping. And so if you enjoy that aspect of it, Bloods and Short Tails hands down are one of the most phenomenal snakes to work with. Now that doesn't mean that you can't have one that's a little bit more defensive and never really builds that same relationship. But I think if you, if you do your homework, you get a young animal, you go through uh, you know somebody that's quality and respected, uh, you work with them, you make sure you got the animal set up right, you're, you're in for probably a very, very rewarding relationship as many people who have purchased animals from me can tell you and as I can tell you from purchasing animals from others. Um, so another thing that I really love and the third thing uh, is the legality issue. Right now we're in a time you guys see I post on the channel and if you're paying any attention to what's going on around us, uh, we're under a lot of scrutiny, we're under a lot of stress right now. Uh, the government on the federal, state, county levels, everywhere are just coming down on us from all sides and for no reason, which is very, very frustrating. Uh, you know, you'll see them banning the keeping of a species that's not dangerous to the public and there's no reason that we shouldn't be allowed to own them responsibly. And I understand that not everybody is responsible, but uh, these guys so far have, have done pretty well about staying off the radar for the most part. I do know there are some places within the country here, Canada, other places where there's just a blanket ban on pythons, which is very unfortunate because you have pythons that are this big as an adult, and then you have the ones that are 20 feet. Um, so it's unfortunate they make blanket bans like that because you know something like an anthill python or a children's python or a spotted python, you know, all these snakes are not dangerous to anybody. Um, you know, they can't inflict any kind of damage on you that's that's significant or even even anything to worry about, and yet they're banned. Um, and then on the flip side, you could get a colubrid that's eight or nine feet and could, could, you know, not necessarily do a lot of damage, but certainly more dangerous than an anthill python, uh, but they make these blanket bans. But Bloods and Short Tails have stayed off the radar, by and large, on a lot of this stuff. Um, now, obviously, I still get involved in every single thing that I see and I try to help because we need to be a community and we need to fight together. Uh, I was very, very upset to see a comment the other day on the page where somebody said, you know, basically, well, you know, people don't need to keep these because they're dangerous. But who decides that they're dangerous and what makes them more dangerous than my dog? My dog is a much more bigger threat to the public than any snake that I own because my dog is outside right now. If she decides to jump that fence and take off, she could bite 15 people. 
there's nothing to stop her. My snakes are enclosed in a cage in the house, and then even if they get out of that cage, they're enclosed in a room, and even if they somehow get out of that room, they've got to get out of the house, and then they have to come into contact with people. And unlike dogs that can exhibit aggression, snakes don't have that. So snakes are just going to be defensive. So unless you get into their space, they're not going to bother you. A dog, if they want to go after you, they might run 100 yards to get to you. A snake's not going to do that. So it's a totally different level. And I'm not saying dogs are dangerous. I have a dog. I love my dog. But it's just these bands that are coming down are not appropriate. And so Bloods and Short Tails have stayed off the radar. I felt a little safer about investing in them from an investment standpoint, not just the pet side of things. Uh, but still, if you have a pet, wouldn't you rather have something that you're going to be able to keep for the long term? I want those snakes for 20, 30, 50 years. I don't want to have to worry about getting rid of them, and we may still, the way things are going, but uh, I feel a little bit better about that. So that's the third reason that I really like blood and short tail pythons. Um, another reason, uh, and I'll, I'll post some pictures as I'm talking about this, we'll put some stuff up in the video so you guys can see, but the look and the variety that these animals come in really captivates me. Now, I appreciate morphs, and, and I like that, but I just like the subtle differences that you can get within you know, bloods and short tails. You look at a lot of the nicest blood pythons out there and they're not morphs. They're line bred examples that people have taken the time over the course of generations to really hammer out. Um, you look at some of, you know, Kara's lines. Uh, Al Brown has a really nice line. Uh, Kevin Martyr, obviously. I think most people probably like Martyr line above most other. And, and those lines are consistent performers. And what that means is that you buy one of those babies, you really know what you're going to get. And obviously they can vary a great deal as they age, but you know you're going to get a quality animal that's going to add to any breeding program that you put it into. Um, now the frustrating thing for those people that work very hard on these lines is that somebody will take what they've done, take that animal, breed it to something else that's not of such high quality, and then sell the baby citing their line. And so then you'll see those and think, oh, well, that doesn't really impress me. Always go to the source and check out what they have and look at their line, what they're working with, because that's going to tell you. Um, everybody has martyr outcrosses, there's Red Bull outcrosses, Manic Panic, Raspberry, all this stuff. And outcrossing is cool and it's how you kind of make your own thing and, and pave your own way. Um, but just be careful with that for sure. Um, but yeah, the variety, I mean, Borneo short tails are, are the pinnacle of variety. Uh, within one clutch of 15 babies, you get 15 totally different looks. And I've told you guys before, that's one of the, my favorite reasons for breeding Borneo short tails is the variety that you get and the excitement of that 60 days while you're waiting for those eggs to hatch, you know, give or take, sometimes 56, here they come, sometimes 64. Uh, but that excitement never gets old to me. Every single Borneo clutch I have ever hatched, it's like me staring in the incubator, like, come on, come on, come on, what's gonna come out? And then once they start pipping, it's like, oh man, when's the next one coming? When's the next one coming? Uh, which I guess can be tough. Uh, you're going to get people that cut eggs at that point because they're impatient. I don't do that, so I wait until they come out. Um, but it, it definitely can drive you nuts because sometimes you'll have one hatch on day 55, 56, and then another one's coming out on day 63, 64. So there can be a week span in there where you're waiting for babies. And um, even within a well-controlled incubator, you just get these high and low spots and things just incubate differently for whatever reason, probably reasons we don't even understand yet on a scientific level. Uh, but definitely variety, even amongst the Curtis um, with the, the Sumatran short tail pythons. You have very, very dark black examples, these wonderful chrome heads. You have the orange heads. You have the um, Sarawak localities that are totally crazy. And you need to see one in person if you, you want to appreciate it truly. Because I know that my appreciation for them uh, did not kick into the level that it is now until I went to Mr. Crowley's house and saw his Sarawaks in person and held them and touched them and, and they're just different. Uh, totally cool snakes. So I love the variety. I love that, you know, there's a look out there for everybody or a species for everybody within the short tail complex. Uh, you know, you got your Curtis, which probably make the best pets out of the three. Uh, you've got your blood pythons, which nobody can argue, beautiful red snake is, is just a pretty animal. Uh, and then you have the Borneos that, you know, when it comes to personality, uh, it's, it's like, um, you know, you, you got your own little Harley Quinn or something. They can just run the spectrum from being totally chill and happy to all of a sudden something upsets them and they are just unreasonable. And the next thing you know, you, it's like a fish out of water and you're trying to hold them back. 
So I enjoy those aspects of, of all three species that they bring to the table, which is why I keep all three, uh, but I love the variety. And uh, for the last thing, and something that I think gets overlooked a lot, for some of us, you know, we've, we've kept one or two species and we're in our niche and we know that group of people. I've been fortunate that over the course of the last nearly 20 years, I've worked with so many species. I've been involved in the ball python community, the short tail community, boas, retics, berms, African rocks, Australian species. Um, so I've gotten to see a little bit of all, all the worlds and each community has its, its own pluses and minuses and whatever. But I can say without any, um, I don't know what the word I want here is, any bias, uh, that the short tail community is the best community that I've ever found. Uh, the people are so supportive. It feels like a family um, and we will bust on each other and give each other a hard time. And yes, as an outsider coming into the community, you can definitely, definitely get your head bit off uh, from time to time if you do or say something stupid and then try to defend that point as opposed to learning from your mistake or admitting your mistake. Um, so I do know that some people come in there and, and like anything else, people are, are way too sensitive now by and large. So they're just looking for reasons to be offended and looking for stuff to bother them. But if you want a supportive community that's gonna give it to you straight, that's gonna tell you, you know what? That snake's really not worth breeding. Why don't you look at picking something up like this? It's going to add to your project or, you know, that's going to clap for you when you have success. That's going to cry with you when you have loss. Uh, it's just a wonderful, wonderful community. Uh, it's embraced me greatly. Um, and uh, I have I have enjoyed being a part of it since the first day that I entered it. I've learned a lot from a lot of people there. Uh, I find that among all the other communities that I've been into, the people in this one will take the time to help you, especially if they recognize that you want to learn and that you want to take the next step, they will help you. Uh, and I do my best to be very personable with people, even though I'm not necessarily a, a personable person in my day-to-day -day life, I really try to with the snake community to take time out and talk to people and help people and do these videos and do all this stuff. and. You know, those of you that have been here since the beginning know I've gotten a lot more comfortable with shooting these videos than I was. Uh, still not a, fi a fan of it, but I still do it because I, I saw that there was, uh, this niche was lacking uh, in this type of, of content where it's not, you know, me going, oh, the snake's trying to bite me because I'm flopping it around and I'm gonna act like it's a snake. Uh, I'm not into that. I don't wanna see that and I don't wanna put that on my channel. Um, I also don't wanna hide anything. So if I'm sitting here with a snake and it bites me, you're gonna see that. Um, has not happened while shooting these videos yet. I am approaching 200 videos on this channel. No, no snake bites yet. Knock on some real wood there. Uh, I've been struck out a few times and I did get bit and wrapped on a live stream on Facebook once. That's the only time ever shooting a video that I got, I got lit up. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's a big deal to me to, to be honest with you to not, you know, be editing out stuff on the animal's behalf. I don't really even edit out stuff so much on my behalf. I kind of just edit to, to make the video make sense for you guys. Um, you know, put the, the intro in there, things like that. So I hope that you guys enjoy this kind of content. If you do, uh, don't forget to hit the like button. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think about this video, other videos, what you think about short tails in general. Tell me what your favorite reason for keeping them is if you keep them or what it is that attracts you to them the most if you're not keeping them. Uh, so I want to hear all of that. And then, uh, you know, if you, you find this content helpful, then absolutely uh, hit that subscribe button and uh, turn your notifications on. And you'll see more videos like this. We'll do a live video very soon. Uh, I have a t-shirt to give away. Um, it's not going to be any suspense to the person that won it because I gave you guys a chance to win a t-shirt and only one person entered. Uh, so that one person's going to win. So uh, next time I do that, you might want to pay more attention because you can get some free stuff. Alrighty, we'll see.